Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being the show, we're talking about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Reginald the Vampire. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So obviously in this episode, we learn uh, Maurice's tragic backstory. It is just this complicated confluence of events, just kind of playing off each other. Because the fact of the matter is... Obviously, once again, road to hell, paid for good intentions and everything. The fact is, where this all started was because, obviously, him and Angela, now, now that she ended up making him what he is, he believed, like, right, time, he knows things aren't going to change overnight. But now I have the time to live long enough to see it change. But then Angela throws it, and then we'll also live long enough to see things change again, which isn't always a good thing or a bad. I don't know. I mean, change can, can be good. Too, but it's always like, I mean, because he had talked about the fact is for them, it's like one steps forward and then all of a sudden it's two, three, four, five steps back, you know? And so, sadly, Maurice ended up killing a cop that attacked him and beat him up. And now it's a thing of, no, no, we have, we have to stay because like someone innocent will be put on, put in, um, blame for this. And she's like, yes, not just one, maybe 50 innocent people. It's just, that's how it is. Like, um, uh, once again, interesting parallels just because like, uh, we saw a similar thing happen in Interview with the Vampire. A uh, decision um, that Louis made ended up having massive ramifications for um, the town he lived in, you know? And so we kind of see the same thing here. And it's like, you know, especially because Maurice saw the, the, the his opportunity with the Panthers now being able to live such a long time as an opportunity for there to be change but becoming what he did had its has its downsides and this was still fresh enough in his transformation that he couldn't completely control himself and because of that now things turned out the way they did but him and Angela they were going to disappear you know it's like right we'll go to France or you know for or Paris for like maybe you know a decade or two you know and just live our life together but Maurice couldn't leave until he saw his mom one last time but the problem is being around his mom of because you knew, like, because he had that, that conversation he had given to, um, the, that he'd given to, um, Reginald last episode meant, like, right, he knows what it's like to be in love with a human and the ramifications of those two worlds. You can no longer be a part of someone's world, a, a human's world, once you've taken that, once you become a vampire. Just, it does not all, it does not end well. That, that it's just a tragedy waiting to happen. He's seen this story play out from personal experience. And Angela told him not to even show up, but she was still being supportive to him because she loved him and cared about him. But, Maurice just couldn't let go. So it's a little bit of both. You can't blame Maurice for what, you know, when you're scared and when you're in trouble and you're asked to leave your entire life behind. It's like, yeah, it's just a reminder of like, but I don't, he's like, I don't want to leave my mom behind. Like, it's like, even if it's just the whole, th especially because at the time he was probably thinking she was alone. Like his dad was gone. So he didn't want to leave her alone, especially because it's like the comfort of home, you know, that feeling of no matter what you've done or, you know, that you always have this plate, you always have home to come back to, you know, and he, he felt comfortable here, despite Angela telling him time and time again, we need to leave, we need to leave, we need to leave, it is kind of on Maurice, because he wanted to stay, he kept being like, no, 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 just one, we, we, we don't need just one more night, just let, let's just, let's take some time, I just can't tell her goodbye yet, and that's, if he had just, and it's a combination of hate towards Angela for what she did, but also hate for himself. Cause he's like, right. If I'd never, if I'd never, for one, it's like, if I'd never agreed to let Angela make me what I was, none of this would have happened too. Multiple times I could have walked away, but I refused to, because I didn't want to leave my mom behind you because it wasn't cause like my mom needed me. It's because I needed her so desperately. I was, I refused to let go when I should have. You know, and it's just, I think that guilt he's been carrying for the past 50 years and that, that anger, you know, that especially because when you think about what Angela said, like, right, you think what you did to that cop was justice. No, it was revenge. And the fact of the matter is if you can't tell the difference and now it's like, yeah, like that ended up coming back around. So the, the, um, tragic irony of that statement coming back around because Maurice is someone that will like seek vengeance instead of justice. I don't know. D d d to him, maybe it's all one and the same, especially when it comes to his mom's circumstances. But you like 
things did not play out the way I thought they would. Because I thought Maurice would just refuse to let go, and eventually his mama would find out what he is. Which she kind of did, but I, I expected Maurice to be the one that ended up killing her. And he blames Angela because, like, Angela, I mean... She kind of end up, she does end up setting the whole thing up in the episode, but I thought like she was going to set it up even more so and end up pushing him to kill his own mom. And, uh, but it wasn't even like the fact is she purposely knew like she overheard Maurice. He wasn't willing to go. It's like, because I think for her, it was her way of being like, right, you got to learn this hard lesson. So I thought she was going to like, right, I'm going to kill your mom and show you that this is the reality of it. You can't keep a human in your life when we, what, when we are what we are. Because she even says, like, eventually your mom will find out what you are and she will kill you for it. Because maybe Angela's known that situation personally where it's like, right, maybe someone she loved, like a family member, or just someone in general that she loved, tried to kill her upon finding out what she is. Especially considering Maurice's mom is very religious. You could see, like, her seeing him as a bit of an abomination. Um, But I think through and through... um. Despite that, she still saw her son for who he was. It's like, right, you made some mistakes. You're still my boy. You, you know, and I, I will always love you. That was I don't know, point. Like, right, if you, whenever, forever long you want to or need to catch your breath, you could always stay here. You know, because um, he was talking about like, oh, he's like, yeah, I met this guy that no matter how much he got beat, he always stood up. I believe that fool could actually change the world. I don't know whether Maurice was referencing someone who inspired him to join the Black Panthers or maybe like the head of the Black Panthers at the time, or was he just specifically talking about who he was, the fool that he was believing like, right, the world can actually change that. This fool believed that he could change the world. I, it, it could be either way. I initially took it as kind of like him talking about himself in like the third person type of situation, but maybe he actually was talking about like the leader of the Black Panthers at the time. But either way, um, it, I, Angela was like, oh, yeah, I'll watch the door, you know, because he's like, yeah, my mom could come up at any time. It's like, oh, you haven't fed in all that time. There was also that bottled nearby. So I'm like, did she drug him back then for, I guess, for more recent an episode? What was it? Episode two. It's just kind of like, oh, like it cut even deeper because of like, right, you drug me yet again because he got so caught up in like the meal and everything like that. Like he ended up passing out afterwards and he smells that bottle nearby. I can only assume like she drugged him back then too. So it's like history repeated itself again, you know, because uh, she feels the need to like uh, drug him to try and make a point. And uh, I thought she was just going to, she, I thought, oh, so you're just going to straight up kill Maurice's mom. It's like, I don't see how that's going to really get him on your side. But it's like, oh, no, she changed Maurice's mom. It's like, right, now you can um, have each other. Like, you can, I know you're never going to leave her. And this way, you don't have to. It's like human lives are so brief. You're still fresh into this. You don't know, like, how quickly the human lifespan can pass, like, flash by. And so that's the tragedy of it, too. In her own twisted way. Angela thought she was doing, like, more research, but she also didn't care. She probably knew the end result was going to be, and your mom probably, like, because she was so indifferent the moment she did it. Like, it's not like, I'm sorry, Maurice, I tried to, it's like, no, you were just so indifferent. You even said later on, yeah, I let you sit here and, like, weep and be a sad boy all day. It's like, yeah, she didn't do it out of, like, care. It was more so out of manipulation. It's like, right. I'm giving you what you want to be with your mom the entire time. Well, now you can't like Maurice was never going to be happy with him. Like, cause at least Maurice had the choice. His mom, the choice was taken from her. Like she didn't have a choice in that matter. Angela made that choice for her. And so Maurice would never have looked at it the same way. So <clears throat> I thought he was going to be forced to kill his mom, but his mom killed herself. Cause she's like, right. I can't, I can't live like this. And even saying like, it's okay. She's like, me and your dad will be waiting for you for whenever you do, like, make that choice to come be with us, you know? Because she doesn't, because she's like, oh, what, what, did you really kill? He's like, it's complicating. But, and despite that, despite everything, despite her being the religious person that she is, despite her issues with what she's become, what her son has become, she doesn't blame him. She's like, it's okay. Because if anyone, she blames Angela, you know? It's like, right, you've kind of corrupted my son. Like, she's the monster in this situation, not you. 
But like I said, she's so indifferent about it later on. She doesn't feel any... So that's why I'm like, she didn't do it out of concern or love. It was just more so like... I mean, in a, maybe in her own way, it was the only way... Like, she knew she could keep Maurice around. I was like, fine, I'm going to do this for you. Not because I really care about your mom or anything. Because she didn't bother taking the time to get to know Maurice's mom. Because it's like, oh, you're a human. You'll die out eventually. Who cares, you know? Like, she doesn't even like... Because Maurice is still fresh enough in being a vampire that he's keeping up with the pretenses of being human. But I think Angela kind of, like, unless it's just the lay low and stuff like that, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's it's playing a role. But Maurice kind of didn't treat it as a role. It was just kind of like, no, this is who I am. For it. But Angela's like, no, we're, we're well above humans. We're better than humans. And it's just like, you know, it, it's just a role for her to play, so... The fact is she has so in, so much indifference kind of takes away from any like, oh, she did it for your sake. It's like, no, she did it just to keep you around because like maybe in her own twisted way, it's like she does love Maurice. And this was her way to be like, right, I'm going to give you what you want and give you what you need. And that way we can finally go and I can get what I want. I just want to be with you and we can just go do whatever we want to. But for him, he was dead set on that. No, I'm going to kill you. I don't know. You've given me time. I, and I don't know whether Angela probably thought like, right, he'll he'll sulk for a couple decades and then he'll eventually get over it. But it's like, no, he hasn't. The fact is he showed up with Angel Blood, which we still don't know what it would do, but it has to be venomous or dangerous to vampires. The moment we got introduced to the neighbor, I was like, oh, this guy seems a little off. And then the more more time the episode went on, I was like, hitting laundry. He's the um, he's the he's the next summer neighbor kid. He didn't die. And he saw Maurice's mom burn in the sun and he tried to tell other people, but they didn't believe him because it's like, oh, you're 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 crazy. And uh, he spent these past 50 years preparing himself, learning everything he can about vampires. So he leads Maurice into a trap. It's like, oh, I got the devil's trap. I've got, I was going to build a silver cage. I've got uh, this and that. And like every thing that you would typically use against a vampire, holy water, which we already found out, sadly, he didn't know this, but last episode we found out holy water doesn't work on vampires. Reginald learned that uh uh, the hard way. Uh, I mean, luckily he found out the way. He, I mean, not the best circumstances to find out that holy water doesn't work on vampires, but still nice to know that. But we already knew that ahead of time. So, and also he's like, right, you can't leave without my permission and stuff. It's like we've already covered some of those, being like, yeah, a lot of those vampire tropes don't exist in this universe because it's like, right, those are just tropes that movies make up. And he tried to. Uh, I mean, for Maurice, he even apologized. He's like, I'm sorry. It's like, because because of uh, his mom dying, because Alondra was staying with um, with uh, that guy for, uh, with um, staying with um, Maurice's mom for about three months. It's like, right, his dad, his mom was gone. His dad just spent so much of the time drinking. So he, he wasn't much of a father. And sadly, after she died, uh, he had to go back to spending time with his dad. He's like, yeah, but that dad wasn't a father at all. Not like your dad. Your parents actually loved you. They loved each other. And Maurice's mom was the closest thing that he had to a family. And that was taken from him because of Maurice. Like, it is a thing of their choice that the choices Maurice made and Angela made, like, impacted, had an effect on, had such a ripple effect that you know, Maurice was so caught up in his sorrow and never probably crossed his mind to ever check up on that kid, you know, and all this time. And it's like, all he's had is his revenge. And he's like, I'm sorry. That the fact is, you never got to live your life. Your life was for these past 50 years has been consumed with nothing but revenge. And I mean, Maurice knows firsthand and foremost because he's the same way. And so when the time comes, he tries to glamour him, but because he has the um, herb of the cross in his system, it, it's essentially like Vervain in like the Vampire Diaries universe. It's like, right, I can't be compelled. And it, um, I don't know, I don't remember Vervain like has any like particular taste effect on vampires. I don't remember that coming up a lot. <laughs> Maybe it does, and I just don't remember. Um, like, 
I remember it helping, like, oh, you can't compel me, but I don't remember what that does for, like, the taste of, like, the blood in that universe. But it's like, oh, like, the herb of the cross makes my blood toxic to you. But the guy, Maurice is like, right, I wish you hadn't consumed, because he's been consuming it little by little well, over the decades. And he's like, I wish you hadn't done that, because things can never, you, it could have made things easier if I could have just glamoured you. Because, like, he was going to make him forget about, he's like, forget about me, my mom, forget about your revenge, and just go live your life. And now it's like, well... Sadly, ends up having to kill him, and uh, he stockpiles the herb of the cross because this is going to be, I guess, maybe the second best thing he could use against Angela. I, you don't. I'm I'm curious. Is he going to try and use this against multiple vampires? Is he going to maybe with herb of the cross? If he gets enough of it, he can basically make Angel's blood himself. Maybe that maybe or maybe a herb of the cross is part of the ingredients for it. Um, so maybe that's why he's trying to find it, just to make it on his own. Uh, but it makes me wonder, will he stop with just Angela or will he go after more people in the vampire community? Will he try and topple everything that it is? Uh, but it seems like it's specifically aimed at Angela. So I don't know. I mean, obviously he wouldn't do it the Reginald. Um, I think also that once again, kind of plays into why he made Reginald a vampire, why he took such an interest in him because it was like, right. He had no intentions of turning Reginald, but he wanted to help out Reginald because it's like, right. Like this life isn't for everyone. And once again, you have to kind of make that choice. I mean, Reginald was literally about to die. So it's like, right. I have to make that choice for you. So it doesn't seem like you have to like ask someone's permission, but he wants to, he wants to give someone that choice because I think because like, right. His mom wasn't given that choice and see how things kind of played out. So, but part of me wonders, is like, right. Like once again, the hopeless romantic that he is because he was in love at one point in time with Angela and the route that that took down. So when he sees, um, the whole Reginald and Sarah thing, like, I think that's what made him go like, no, 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 no. Like I, I, I want to see there be a happy ending just because his love like kind of had the tragic ending that it did, you know? So, had the complications between him and Angela. What some other things we got this episode was Reginald asking Mike for help. But Mike was like, yeah, this isn't my fight. But then later on shows up. He's like, no, I'm going to train you. And part of me wonders, he says, like, this is my second chance. He's like, yeah, when it's all said and done, you'll learn my sad, tragic tale. So, I'm curious is... Because he initially was telling Reginald to leave town, but Reginald refused to. So, I guess Mike has his guilt over, like, right, I kind of sold you out to Angela... And, you know, it's like, if you're not going to leave, I might as well help you because if you die, Maurice dies too. But she know well, he knows that, um, Angela is going to bring in someone to try and kill, um, Reginald beforehand. So I, I don't know whether he's just trying to, like, keep Reginald distracted from, like, what's coming or does he legitimately go, like, no, I am, this is my second chance, not only for stuff in my past that I had to turn to Angela for help for, but even me selling you out, you know, yes, I care about Maurice, but I was also spying on, so maybe this is him actually looking for a second chance, looking for redemption after all of that, who knows, we'll have to wait and see on that front, but the other side of things is, uh, Angela still has it solidified in her mind, she's going to bring in Nikki, which one of her subordinates is like, yeah, but you know how Nikki is. Like, the fact is, we don't know if she's just going to stop a Reginald. Like, Reginald might not be her only target when it's all said and done. But, and I think Angela had her uh, reservations about it until Eve shows up. And Eve's like, oh, like, kind of spill the tea about everything. It's like, oh, I heard Maurice is back. It's like, well, he tried to bring angel blood. It's like, oh, why would he do that? It's like, I don't know what he was thinking. But also, like, he made the fat vampire Reginald. And they hear, and she hears about. It. She's like, "Oh my God, that's so hilarious! Why would Maurice even do that?" It's like, "Oh well, well, you do know that you're responsible." And she's like, "Wait, what?" It's like, "Yeah, like regardless of it all, like Maurice making that choice, and that was in your territory. You bring it in kind of like a vampire of that ilk uh, makes you look bad. So now that the assessment is here, and you're bringing in Logan uh, for this, and he's gonna oh, knowing that he has to waste his time specifically on this vampire that's being brought in because I'm sure." Word hasn't gotten out about who Reginald is, so it's just like, oh, this is an assessment for a vampire, but it's like, oh, like, this is going to look badly upon you, and Eve, it's like, oh, I'm you going to use this as an opportunity by destroying your reputation, making you look bad, I could take advantage of this, and, um... Uh, promote myself it's just hey, it's kind of just it's just kind of the name of the game type of situation for one to rise one has to fall so kind of saying that even if like 
if things did go through, because I think she was going to probably potentially just let the assessment go through. She was still weighing her options. If she actually lets it go through, it will backlash on her. Like, even if Reginald ends up dead, you, uh, you got rid of it. You get rid of Maurice, you know, you know, one for one. But also, like, she was having her reservations because she didn't want to kill Maurice. Because, right, she's his maker and they have their bonds. Because she even said, like, the last time they spoke, like, hey... Uh, yes, I made you, but you also made me too. Like they had, you know, an effect on each other. That's how that, uh, that sire bond kind of works both ways in that regard. And, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think maybe she was having, like, like I said, having her reservations about it. So maybe she was going to let the assessment go through until Eve said what she said. I thought because of that, she was eventually go like, you know what? Actually, Nikki, I want you to kill Eve because I don't want her running her mouth about all this. So it's like, no, go ahead, kill Reginald now. And if uh, Eve says anything, it's just like, well, it doesn't matter. It's her word against, you know, me and the, the vampire no longer exists. So all it is is just, you know, hearsay from Eve's mouth. So you can't really uh, say it's true. So I don't know. It's definitely going to be interesting to see where that takes us. Uh, getting introduced to this Nikki and seeing how it all plays out. But it probably, like, and Maurice will have to tell Reginald his story and tell him the complications of, you know, wanting to, your refusal to let a human go because you love them so much and the tragedy that can follow. Like, this, their, this story will always end tragically. Like, if he can sit down with Reginald and tell him that story, you know, because there's a direct, it's not a one to one, but it's, it is a direct parallel. And in, in in most regards to, you know, Maurice's mom situation to the whole Reginald and Sarah thing. So, like I said, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us with all of these elements uh, going forward. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.